open the uh, board of uh, Harwich uh, board of selectmen's meeting for January 21st, 2020. Uh, let me read that as required by open meeting law, you are hereby informed that the town will be video and audio taping as well as live broadcasting of public meetings. In addition, anyone in the audience who plans to video or audio tape this must meeting must notify the chairman prior to the start of the meeting. See no interest in doing that, so I ask you to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, thank you. Uh, weekly briefing, Joe? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I didn't, weren't sure if you wanted to start out with the uh, Remembrance at this point. I'll start off with remembrance, come back to that. Uh, as I think we all all have, uh, learned this weekend that Lee Culver, our emerg emergency manager, uh, passed away uh, a couple days ago. Uh, he was uh, such a critical part of our town activity for many years. Many of us, speaking for myself, saw Lee when things were, weren't going well during tornadoes and hurricanes and activities such as that, and he always came through. This is a little different than uh, we've probably done this before, but I've asked and invited uh, four of our town residents and staff to take a few minutes to uh, remember uh, Lee. And uh, I've asked uh, Chief Norm Clark, uh, Chief Dave Gildemet, the uh, police chief, uh, Sean O'Brien, who's the County Emergency Management Director, if I got that right, Sean, as a title. And uh, Carolyn Carey, who's worked with Lee for uh, probably most of the 20 years that Lee was involved with the community center. And I've asked each of them to give us, uh, tell us a little about how they remember Lee, what, is, what he meant to the town and what he meant to them. And I think we can, we'll, all of us here will certainly, I'm sure, relate to all that. So, uh, Chief Gilman, let me start with you, and uh, we'll move down that. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Chief Dave Gilmet, uh, Harwich <coughs> Police, and on behalf of the each member of the Harwich Police Department, I'd like to extend our deepest condolences to to Lee Culver's family, his friends, and his coworkers. Um, Lee served the Harwich Police Department with distinction for uh, over 29 years. Um, he began his career uh, with Harwich in the early 70s as a part-time officer. Uh, he was eventually appointed a full-time officer in 1979 and attended the 47th session of the Barnesville Police Academy. Uh, in 1988, Lee was appointed juvenile officer within the detective division, and he remained in the detective division for the next 20 years, where he served roles as uh, not only a juvenile officer, but court liaison officer and uh, detective. Uh, he also uh, started his involvement with emergency management in 1988 as the assistant to Captain Peter Welsh, who was then uh, uh, running emergency management for, uh, for Howitch. And then when uh, Captain Welsh retired, Lee took over the reins from him and continued on as emergency, manage emergency management director during his, uh, the remainder of his career with the police department and then um, for several years after that until his passing. Um, all of you, I'm sure, know Lee uh, better than I do. I've only been in town, as you know, for five years, but I have worked with him. I did have the opportunity to work with him, not as a police officer, but as emergency management director. Um, several uh, winter storms, and most notably the tornado strike in uh, last July, which I think tested everybody's grit. But uh, Lee was completely unflappable. Um, uh, he was an extremely knowledgeable, experienced team player. Uh, he, and he always had the safety and best interests of the citizens of this community in mind. So he will definitely be greatly missed by all of us at the Harwich Police Department. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Chief Clark? As, as many know, uh, I, I usually have a script, but in Lee's honor, I'm unscripted. So <laughs> what comes out comes out, as would be with Lee. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's good to, uh, to, to think of the great things that uh, Lee did as a, as a friend, 
uh, and first and foremost, a family guy. He loved his family. He loved his boys. Uh, he came from uh, an extended family here in Howard uh, uh, that goes back generations. Um, he, just, uh, he was just committed in everything he did, from his family to the police department to emergency management, and really his, his real, what I was so impressed with during, during some financial times is we got that community center built. I served with him on that, on that committee. And it wasn't a committee, it was a passion. He was determined to take care of the youth, to take care of the seniors, and then fill in between with the rest of us at that community center. And he did it. <coughs> and it wasn't, wasn't uh, if it wasn't for Lee Culver, that building wouldn't be there. It just wouldn't be there. So uh, I admire his grit, uh, uh, his spontaneity. I, I, it probably rubbed off on me, good, bad, or indifferent. I'm proud of it. Um, uh, but he was just such a committed guy. Uh, Chief Gamet uh, mentioned uh, emergency management. You know, you don't see much of those uh, those folks. Uh, you know, Sean O'Brien is a, is uh, leads a, a, a big area of Cape Cod in these emergencies. You don't see them until the bad one comes. But they don't just start uh, their commitment to the community the day the thing happens. They work the other 364 days a year getting ready for that one day. And Lee did that. He was committed to uh, emergency management. And again, that, that, that transcends back to his love of the community. He wanted to protect the community. Lee also had an interesting way about him in that, <clears throat> uh, as, as you know, uh, Chief Gilmet and I are of a certain ilk. We, we are um, um, pretty much confident in what we do, and we kind of like to run the show, and that's important uh, and for our jobs. But when it came to those disastrous storms that, that hit our community, we knew Lee was in charge. And I was really glad Lee was in charge because it was bigger than what I knew I could do. It was bigger than what we could do. And Lee Culver knew. He knew what to do, and he knew how to keep us safe and all of you safe. So uh, more than mourn his loss, I ce celebrate his life. Thank you, Norm. I, I can confirm that the any conversation I had with Lee, there's very few people that were more direct <laughs> than, <laughs> than he was in his conversation and his points that he wanted me to, to know. Uh, Carolyn, you, can I ask you to uh, say a few words next? Well, I must say, I always follow our chief. <laughs> <laughs> So I can't do what you ask. I could not possibly tell you what Lee Culver means to me personally, but I can tell you what he means to the community center and his loss. Um, or maybe I can't even do that truthfully because, as you say, he was pretty direct. If you think it was a passion to build that building, you should have seen him every day. I don't believe there was a day he did not check on the building. And trust me, if something was wrong, I knew about it. <laughs> but it only made me love him more because I truly believed in the concept. Um, his vision was infectious. He taught me so much, some of what not to do and some of what to do. One of the things that he taught me uh, was how to juggle. He said that it would be important that I always know as they wash ashore. I would need to know how to juggle, and what that meant is I need to know which, which balls in the air were glass and which were rubber, because the rubber ones could always bounce back, but the glass ones would break. And as he was telling me that, he said, make no mistake about it, never let that family ball drop. It is the most precious glass in all the world. So although he meant everything to the community center, the Council on Aging, the Youth and Rec, Channel 18, the Veterans Affairs, the cemetery, because he checked on all of us, I really wanted to take just a moment to thank his family who loaned him to the town of Harwich for all of the emergency storms, for the late nights at the community center, a water pipe break. Um, I think that he said it best when he told me he was there to protect and serve, and that meant every one of us, some more than others, but that he would take care of everything and we would be okay. I always knew somebody had my back, 
whether it was in public. Later on, he'd probably yell at me. But that's who Lee Culver was. He would have every one of your backs. He would fight with you in public, but love you dearly behind the scenes. He referred to the building as the Culver Center. So in some reports, you may still see that. I know that's not its name, but for me, it will be ever called the Culver Center. Thanks. Thank you, Carolyn. Thanks. <clears throat> I think you uh, met my, uh, answer my request. Thank you. <laughs> Sean? Uh, thank you. Um, first of all, my condolences to the town of Harwich <coughs> and Lee's family. Um, losing Lee was losing a great friend. And Lee's impact wasn't only to the town of Harwich, it was also to Barnstable County and all the people here on Cape Cod and the assistance he's given over the years. When I first started my work with Barnstable County in the Regional Emergency Planning Committee, Lee Culver was one of the first to welcome me to the job, probably because he knew what I was in for. We would meet often at Dunkin' Donuts, and yes, he would have a donut because he wasn't afraid of the whole uh, cop stereotype. He did. Um, he gave me good advice. He listened, he cared. In fact, he loved the town of Harwich. He always talked about the town of Harwich and the center, and the Culver Center. That's how I'm going to call it from now on, um, for which he served many, many decades. During those uh, many coffee meetings, it wouldn't be long before discussion would turn to the business of, from the business of emergency management uh, and sheltering program he was passionate about, but to family. Lee was a family man through and through. Uh, we always talked about our spouses, our children, and his beautiful grandchildren. Lee was a tireless public uh, servant, no question, but mostly he was a tough, loyal, hardworking family man. We share <coughs> on a much smaller scale their loss. There will be many times in the days to come, especially if those days include a snowy nor'easter with massive lower Cape power outages, that I will think of Lee and wish he was here to jump in. Uh, as he always did, wherever he was needed, he will be sorely missed. Lee was just an incredible, he was just an incredible mentor for me. So I want to thank the town of Harwich and I want to thank his family for being able to provide me selfishly that opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sean. Just one rejoinder to that. Uh, my brother, uh, his career was as a policeman. Uh, he refuses to call donuts, uh, he calls <coughs> donuts uh, cop fruit. Just to uh, clarify that. <laughs> Any other, anyone else for uh, public comment, uh, comments? Thank you. And thanks again for all, for all Thank of you, you to uh, sharing some of your thoughts. Uh, regarding Lee Culver. Steve, move, uh, wish to move to consent agenda? Okay. Uh, uh, minutes, uh, July 22nd, 2019, regular session. Uh, B, vote to approve the interim assistant town administrator's recommendation to grant permission to NSTAR Electric Company to install 37 feet of conduit and cable <coughs> under the road in Central Avenue, Howard. C, vote to approve the request to close Cape Sea Grill from January the 29th, 2020 to February the 29th, 2020 for cleaning and <coughs> renovations. <coughs> D, vote to approve the referral of zoning amendment to the planning board pursuant to MGLC 40A, section five regarding essential services. E, vote annual and seasonal lodging House or inholders uh, license renewal 2020 as listed in the packet. F vote annual vitreous license renewal 2020 as listed in the packet. And G vote annual entertainment license renewal 2020 as listed in the packet. Second. <coughs> Second. Uh, any discussion? Sorry. Uh, Michael? Just before we vote on this, can we go back and uh, Joe give the sewer schedule? Uh, uh, why, why don't we finish right this, Michael, no, no, and then we'll go back. This, Hold on, then we'll go back. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for reminding that. Anyone, uh, any discussion from the audience? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, good point, Michael. If we'll move back, and Joe will give you a chance to talk about this sewer. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. This is the, um, the three-week look ahead for the um, Phase Two Contract One, uh, the work being done by Robert B. Hour. The one week look ahead for this week of October 20th. The uh, mainline sewer crew number one is working, uh, doing tests and inverts 
and casting adjustments uh, around the area of Route 137 and Route 39. Uh, Mainline sewer crew number two, they continue their work on Route 137. Uh, however, that's also a reminder this week that they have one of those, uh, as we've mentioned before, deep uh, set sewer manhole installations, which will require uh, extended hours until 8.30 p.m. on Wednesday and Thursday of this week. Again, any of the work that's being done in Route 137 <coughs> is uh, necessitating detours. The uh, next week, look ahead for the week of January 27th. Mainline sewer crew number one, the subcontractors are working at various locations and are beginning the uh, sewer installation on Old Heritage Way. Uh, group crew number two continues on Route 137 and this is uh, yet another of the uh, deep set manholes that will be um, put in on Monday. I believe it's a continuation of the work from this week of Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, again, requiring detours. And the week of February 3rd, the uh, sewer crew number one continuing their installation on Old Heritage Way. And sewer crew number two is uh, continuing on Route 137 with detours. That is the update for phase two contract one, Robert B. Hour. Uh, the latest update that we have from RJV, uh, they've bumped out their schedule a little bit uh, longer than expected. So now they're saying that the week of January 27th is going to be their mobilization week and that they expect to begin their work on uh, the week of February 3rd uh, in and around Cemetery Road. I can also report out, Mr. Chairman, that uh, I participated in a uh, joint meeting of both contractors as well as Town of uh, Chatham last week on the coordination of the two contracts uh, initiated uh, really <coughs> by uh, police in both communities and it was uh, an exceptional meeting. Uh, I have every sense that everybody's on the same page and everyone's on board uh, so that as the projects come together, what Robert B. Hour is already doing in Chatham, what Robert B. Hour is doing in Harwich and what our RJV will be doing in Harwich uh, early in February uh, is well coordinated and uh, the detours that are in place should not be uh, any more uh, difficult than they've been. In fact, we um, think it's actually more <coughs> of a strength of coordination. So, okay. very positive aspect. Thank you, Joe. Any questions uh, for Joe? Any, uh, Don? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to make a comment. It's not particularly about that, but I've had a couple of people uh, talk to me in terms of um, getting confusing information. I mean, this is helpful uh, for, general, for the general public, but if anybody's got a particular problem, about how their particular hookup uh, <coughs> matches up with the sequence uh, of what we're doing. Uh, just want to remind them that they can contact either Dan Peltier at the uh, Water Department or we have option four, which uh, is a direct link uh, to messaging uh, Charlie Sumner, who's our liaison for the project. So uh, general stuff we're gonna hear here. If you've got any particular questions relating to yourself, those are the two routes you should probably take. Thank you, Dan. Anyone, any from the audience have questions? <coughs> Peter LaPointe, I'm a non-resident taxpayer with a house on Hardin Lane. Mm -hmm. And I'm here because I'm curious about the progress, but also just to speak up about the residents who received the letter in December asking us to confirm our preferred location for a hookup to the sewer line. And in our case in particular, all of us on Harden Lane, it's less uh, simple because we're on a slope and we need to know not only the plan location but the elevation. So we're trying to sort out this information from the stuff that's available on the website. But it's, I'm finding it hard to interface with the town in terms of getting cooperation and coordination. So I just wanted to share that. Well, let me, uh, let us follow up with you and, and organize a smaller meeting and, and go through the design okay. of that. And Jill, could you leave, uh, excuse me, can you leave us your uh, <coughs> contact information so we can get a hold of you? And we'll follow up. Uh, Jenny, did I miss you or? Uh, no, you didn't do the, uh, pardon? You didn't do the other part of the agenda, the. Uh, Item four. Public comments. Uh, yeah, public comments, you, you kind of. I'm going to, that's why I'm asking for a public comments with Jenny. Sorry. Yeah, I was a little confused, sorry, because I, I was waiting to go after the sewer right. update. Um, I'm Jenny Hewitt, the director at Brooks Free Library, and I just want to make a couple announcements. Um, the first is that the library will be closed on uh, early on Friday, uh, January 31st, for an all-staff development um, program. Um, 
on that Friday, which is it's a week from Friday, we'll open <coughs> at 10 and close at 1. Regular hours will resume on Saturday at 10 a.m. Um, in the event of inclement weather, we'll postpone that training until uh, March 13th. But um, we don't take it lightly closing the library, so this isn't just some reader's advisory or some new electronic resource. This is safety and security training for staff members. Uh, it's a public building, and so obviously you're dealing with uh, challenging situations or maybe challenging behaviors, and this training has been needed for some time. So in order to get everyone together, we have to do it during the day. Um, people have other commitments with other jobs, and this is just what works out best. It's not a long, you know, it's not a day we're open till seven, so um, so it doesn't impact that many library hours. Um, and the second thing is better news. Um, we had a very successful first session last week of the Know Your Town series that we're doing with the Voter Information Committee, and uh, Mr. Ballantyne, Mr. Powers, and Town Clerk Anita Doucette participated, and we want to thank them very much. Um, the next session is next Tuesday, the 28th at 2 p.m., we don't have the lineup set yet. Unfortunately, we're trying to do a series of programs, and it's every other Tuesday. Um, but we were trying to group like departments together. We run into a little bit of difficulty as people have other commitments, obviously. Um, so we'll have that lineup set soon. But just wanted to advertise that th those programs are taking place on Tuesdays, and the next one is next Tuesday at 2 p.m. And uh, finally, just because I'm here, um, I wanted to mention that in, uh, you know, everyone knows the 2020 census is coming up. And uh, on February 6th, um, Emily Mitchell at the COA and the library will be putting together an information session for residents on, uh, you know, how the process works and what to expect. But uh, since I'm making an announcement, I thought I, it never hurts to say um, we really need to get the word out to our snowbirds that people need to file their census return documenting where they live year-round, not where they live most of the year, not where they are on April 1st. Uh, that could be a huge reduction in our numbers if people think that that's the case, and a lot of people do think that. So really, it's, it's where you live um, and sleep most of the year. So if people, you know, a lot of people have already gone, but uh, we should be asking um, people, to, our residents, to tell their friends and neighbors that are away to pass the word along. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Anyone else for public comment announcements? Dave? Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Deputy uh, LeBlanc for the fire department. Some uh, good news, which I think we all deserve, uh, especially in the financial sector. Uh, we received a notification today from the state that we uh, successfully received the Harwich, uh, or the uh, Student Awareness and Fire Education Grant and the Senior Safe Grant. Uh, these programs are both managed by Captain Smith. Um, it's a program that you have to develop in order to keep getting money, and once you develop it, you get more money every year you do it. So Leanne has taken this from virtually no funding to uh, just under $4,000 for the student safe awareness and just over $2,000 for the senior safe. They work with the, the, uh, the um, Council on Aging, go out, do smoke detector replacement, uh, check for hazards in the houses, and then it's all the public safety training we do at the school with the the elementary school kids, as well as when we do a docudrama or the safety trailer that we'll do. <coughs> so it's, uh, it's a program that's come a long way, and uh, again, Captain Smith's done a good job. We now have four people that are certified or trained within the department to work with the kids and the elderly. Uh, on that note, we're uh, redoing our Citizens Fire Academy again after a, probably a 10-year hiatus. Captain John Clark created it a long time ago. It was very successful and then kind of lost interest. So Justin White, uh, one of our lieutenants, sees the ball and has run with it. And if it's not full, it's pretty close to being full. We're going to do the first one uh, in March. And then depending on the success, we'll run it again every year. And then finally, the good news, the big good news. Uh, I went to a meeting yesterday, Chief, uh, the other day. Chief Gilmet was with me in Yarmouth. Uh, we've been talking about, and it's been looming on the capital plan, about a million dollars to replace public safety radios. We've been pushing it off until we got a final answer. The state um, added an E911 surcharge to fund the state upgrade of the radio system. Both police and fire operate on the state police or the state's uh, 800 megahertz trunking system. $25 million a year being set aside. They anticipate $125 million total for the project. And with that, every subscriber, so every radio that's currently on the system, will be replaced. 
which means Harwich Police Radios, <coughs> Harwich Fire Radios, Harbor Master, will all be replaced. Um, there's, there's some things. That they'll replace a base radio if we need the radios that we need. There's a little bit of an upcharge. Also, uh, speaker mics, chargers, batteries will all be extra. But we're anticipating a million dollar cost being probably bound to about 150000 so uh, that was good news. <laughs> that's More information news. to come, uh, but that's that's where it stands right now. <coughs> so just to repeat the, the the final statement, the state stepping up and as a source of funds for the radios that we absolutely yep to. they 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 recognize that. Um, so this whole thing was funded originally in the early '90s uh, by Representative Kahare out of Bourne. Yeah. They we were looking for a radio system in Barnesville County, and he put a state transportation bill in that funded all of our radios. So we didn't pay for radios initially, and then we've clawed and paid for every radio that we've added to the system since. We were able in 2010 to get a grant to purchase the majority of the radios for the fire department, but now all those radios, at least will be some funding, <coughs> partial funding, for all of them to replace all of them to, for the new system. So it's, uh, it was good news. Excellent. And, and what's the funding source the state uses? So the uh, E911, there's a surcharge on your phone bill for enhanced 911. The original paid for the 911 system. They bumped it up to uh, do the new rollout of the enhanced 911 that came out this last year. It went back down, and then they added another surcharge back on to fund the radio system. So it's, it doesn't affect any of the 911 funding. That's still there. This is over and above that funding. So when you look at your bill and you see that little E911 surcharge, that's what's paying for this. So, so <laughs> we at the are, town, we're not paying for it, but as townspeople, we're still right. paying for it. <laughs> Every, everybody that has a phone is paying for it. Yep, yeah. absolutely. But they were collecting it nonetheless, so <laughs> we're, we're getting a share, and that's terrific. Yep, that's great. <laughs> Thank you. Public comment continues. Announcements? Thank you. I just wanted to remind people that this uh, February is our birthday celebration. Um, February 1st, we start with the Fairy Doors. On uh, February 2nd is our Super Bowl Sunday party from 12 to 2. On Wednesday, uh, people will be receiving invitations in the mail, but it is certainly open to the public. That is the day that we turn 20, um, and we are doing a then and now celebration along with a cake decorating and baking contest um, and have a time capsule. So I hope that people will be able to come to that at 3 p.m. in the community center. On February 19th at 9 a.m., we have a kid's breakfast. And then at 6 p.m., we'll be having a medium in the gym. And on February 28th is the Sound Dunes Dance. Seating is limited, so if people could call to make their reservations for any of the birthday events. And we hope to see you there. They're all free. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. I, I can only speak for you and I, but... We're probably the only two that haven't changed in 20 years, so. <coughs> Anyone else for uh, public comment? We'll get back on what the agenda should be then, and that is a public uh, pr presentation. And uh, Dan Wolf, is, you're going to update us on the Harwood Center Initiative Committee? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, through you to the members. Good evening. Um, maybe a, instead of a presentation, because that sounds very formal, a bit of a conversation and, and an update. Um, as you know, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, the Board of Selectmen established this working uh, committee uh, last, well, October of 2018. So it's about 14, 15 months uh, that the committee has been established. We met four times uh, last year since the inception of the committee. Um, and the third meeting was actually a public uh, meeting for the public to come and participate. So it was an open meeting, um, and we heard some really, some really interesting input. Um, there is a, in your packet a summary, and I want to thank Jenny Hewitt, for the, the clerk of the committee, for putting that together. She did a really good job trying to bring together uh, both what we had done and, and sort of where we left things last February. The last meeting we had was February 28th of last year, so we're coming up on a year anniversary of the last meeting. Uh, the reason for that was, um, while I appreciate the charge of the Board of Selectmen, I think the committee never really fully understood uh, the power and the uh, impetus it had to actually um, get traction and get stuff done. But I do want to report that throughout the course of the meetings, 
there was a real desire to get community input and to provide some kind of direction to the board um, as to what the vision that this committee had for Harwich Center, the Harwich Center would be. What we quickly realized is that there are so many town functions, so many town departments, entities, individuals involved in the day-to-day -day running of the town but also involved in planning that we really never understood what our relationship to those entities. And just a few, uh, as you know, the town is now undergoing a local, local comprehensive plan. Uh, that is vital relative to understanding what the opportunities are and how to achieve those opportunities in, in the downtown. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce working with the town is looking at the, uh, getting the town of Harwich uh, from the center uh, outward, designated as a cultural uh, center for the, for the, in the Commonwealth. So that is an ongoing initiative. The Cape Cod Commission was looking at a traffic study. I still don't think that's done, but a traffic study uh, to look at the intersection, which really uh, is, I guess, both an opportunity but also a challenge relative to anything we want to do in the center of town. Um, in addition to that, the town itself is looking at sidewalk studies and different transportation uh, options as well as parking options. So I will say that we discussed and looked at all of that. We had a public input session, but I sort of come back to the board. I know you've received a letter from uh, the vice chair of the committee, uh, Senator Paul Doan, relative to continuing the committee. Um, I could editorialize with my own personal comment. Um, I will only do so if asked. Um, I do think there is um, clearly a need to continue a focus on Harwich Center because there is a real history there and there's a real opportunity going forward, aesthetically and economically. Um, but it also is a weird coming together of traffic places. One of the things we heard is the number of vehicles in the summer that pass through that intersection <coughs> is very close to the number of vehicles on Route 28 that go through Harwich Port. So if you're wondering why we're all backed up, uh, as we very often are at that intersection. It's because of how busy the intersection is. And as I said, the good news is that means a lot of people are coming through Harwich Center. The challenging news is what do you do with them to get them to stop here? Where do you put them? And what are they going to do when we're here? So, you know, I wish I had, I, can't, I was coming to you with a presentation that included answers and resources, uh, et cetera. However, um, through the local comprehensive plan, I think we're going to identify some zoning issues that will need to be addressed whether it's housing or commercial opportunities. Uh, zoning is going to be an issue here. Infrastructure and investment in infrastructure, whether it be wastewater, and I know you all looked at that relative to the, the future restaurant at that intersection, but it goes way beyond that. Um, the, the current sewer plan, I don't believe, uh, in the near term anyway, includes Harwich Center, and there's going to need to be a real look at wastewater and infrastructure there if there's going to be future development, whether it's residential or commercial. Uh, and again, that, that falls squarely uh, into the town purview uh, at this point. And then we discussed a lot of different parking options, but I don't think we reached consensus on any of them, <coughs> uh, whether they resided uh, between the parallel street um, uh, and, and, um, you know, and the front of or, or Harwich Center. There were some opportunities to maybe look at uh, parking, uh, enhancing parking there, but all of them were met at various times with resistance some, for, from some people that would be impacted if we enhance parking back. And I'm talking really behind Ruggies and behind the future uh, convenience store there where I know, I know there's a plan there. So, you know, really the report is we met, we had great conversation, but I think um, there really needs to be from the Board of Selectmen, I think, more of a um, direction or a directive uh, either to, through the town manager or through the various departments, whether it be the planning department or or public works, or to bring us together with, with more of a focus uh, challenge or vision of how to accomplish it. Because otherwise what we were is a group of very well-intentioned people, all of whom have an opinion and a stake at what happens in, in Harwich Town Center, but really I don't think any direction or traction to achieve it. I, I hate to be that blunt, but I, I will. So I do have some ideas about what could work going forward. Um, that's about it. I know Ginny Hewitt, who has put a lot of work in uh, as our clerk, I think she would like to say a few words too, and then maybe a discourse if you'd like. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, one of the main issues that we ran into was uh, the committee uh, in our discussions was what economic development activities we could undertake 
and um, I think there was a lot of thought of people who thought that we could approach individual investors and uh, interest them in certain parcels, but the committee ultimately came to the conclusion, the majority of us, that, that we couldn't do that because of state ethics laws and conflict of interest. Um, so that's a question as you consider another committee moving forward. I think that that needs an answer. Um, at your December 23rd meeting when you discussed uh, Mr. Doan's letter, uh, Greg Winston was here and talked about uh, the infrastructure needs being more cosmetic, so we should look at economic development. And um, I think that's not the case. Uh, it's not just a matter of making it pretty. There were a lot, all of the comments that we heard at the public meetings were about traffic calming measures, changes in traffic flow, where on-street parking is allowed to an <coughs> only bottlenecks, redesigning dangerous intersections to improve pedestrian safety, wastewater improvements, improvements to the sidewalks, um, and those kind of things, and um, all of that was dependent on the Cape Cod Commission traffic safety study, which was scheduled for late spring or the summer, and as far as I know, has not happened. Um, so that's something that could use the selectmen to push on that issue. Um, it was, I lived on the other side of Howard Center, just uh, 10 houses down from the library. I spent 90% of my life in these few blocks of Howard Center, it was great to see um, the public interest. Every meeting that we had was attended by 35 people, <laughs> so um, all giving their ideas. <laughs> it was hard, but it was hard. The committee struggled with what is our role. There are entities that already exist to look at these issues. We don't have the expertise or the resources, and so how do we, I don't know, um, I can't think of the word. How, how, how do we like synthesize all of this and put it together into a plan? And we didn't have an answer for that, but in the meantime, we really needed that input from the Cape Cod Commission traffic safety study, and, and it still hasn't happened. Um, but those are, in, there are a number of changes that have previously been recommended by the commission that could be implemented. We could have a stop sign at um, Oak Street and Main Street uh, coming down Route 39 from East Howitch and um, that would slow speed, at least coming that way, if people had to stop. Um, there are gateways you can do uh, to visually tell people that they're coming into a center of activity. All of those were in a study by the Cape Cod Commission maybe 10 years ago. But um, anyway, tho so tho those issues still exist. Um, <coughs> I think if the, if the request by one of our members that to establish a new committee to look at economic development includes outreach to particular investors, then I think that's a question that you need to answer if that is something that a committee can do uh, or members of a, an official town committee do without it looking like they're setting up an inside deal for a developer that they, that they liked. Um, I do think <coughs> there's still a role for something to do with the all the other, well, infrastructure, I'm saying that meaning traffic flow and, and, and design of intersections, um, those kind of things too. Um, but I think there are already departments and boards and committees that deal with those issues in town. Well, that's a broad discussion. Uh, thank you. You know, just uh, one quick point. When I, uh, at least for me personally, I, uh, when I think about economic development, <coughs> it's, it's not trying to uh, negotiate people coming in. It's, it's, it's to, uh, to determine a, uh, maybe more visionary than anything else, of kind of what we want Harwich to look like, and then look at zoning, look at all the other details that might get you to the end. Because I felt the meeting, I, uh, I attended one or two of those, the committee kind of got lost in some of these details without thinking about what direction they're trying to go. And I think we can bring that back. Uh, Dan, uh, you know, you and Jenny both raised, and I asked both of you raised a lot of issues, but. Uh, if you pick that apart, are there some priorities that you would attack earlier? I mean, is it to try to get this vision? Is it trying to uh, be sure you have the proper input into the uh, conference? Thank you, Mr. Planning? Chairman. It, yeah, and in, in other roles where I've sort of had a foot in the public and the private sector, I've been forced to really look at, okay, what's the role of the public sector <coughs> government and what's the role of the private sector? And I think one of the problems we live in the world today is we're sort of confusing the two. 
So directly answer your question, I think what the town should look at is if there's a vision, and you could do anything from a charrette or just ask 10 people, because I think we share a vision. We'd like a walkable, uh, sort of a walkable small village with you know, residential around it that's attractive and aesthetic, but also understanding the importance of it as, as, a, as a crossroad, if you will, and, and really in the center of Cape Cod. I think the, role, the appropriate role of government here would be to say, do we have the infrastructure that's going to facilitate that type of uh, village center? And you know, again, that goes back to, uh, is there a wastewater capacity here? Because there has to be. That, you know, the Board of Health, I think, is, has already spoken to the lack of that, it being an inhibitor is there appropriate safe parking? Because if we're going to have a walking, it's not just the neighborhood around, but it's also <coughs> the ability for people to park and walk there. And I think everybody, and I love the fact that the town is looking really at sidewalks throughout the town. This would be a priority to make sure that pedestrian uh, traffic is really, uh, is, it can, can use the area. So infrastructure, uh, infrastructure, infrastructure, and then zoning. You know, if one of the visions here is to have more uh, residents uh, in and, or walkable to uh, Harwich Center, uh, do, is the zoning there to facilitate that? Um, you know, my direct ask would be uh, either through the, the town manager um, or directly to the departments that the next step, and, and I didn't write the letter, I don't have an objection to the letter from, from uh, Senator Doan, but what I would ask is a little bit different. What I would ask is for the Board of Selectmen to charge the town administrator, town manager, or the departments to actually convene an interdepartmental meeting to discuss those issues with a vision and then to invite in, um, you know, I, I think the, the Senator used the term advisory board. I think that to bring people from the center, both residents and business owners, into a town process so that they're included, but to have existing town entities managing it under the direction of the board and then have them report back to you. Because I will say, as Ginny said, we didn't have the resources um, and we don't really have any authority to ask for meaningful things, either from town entities or the Cape Cod Commission or regional entities. So we sort of had a lot of great conversation, but um, you know, we were all dressed up with nowhere to go. So I guess my put to the board would be, um, if you want to see this go forward, yes, engage the people that are interested in staying engaged, but do it through more of a formal town process that has planning involved, has public works involved, has town administrator involved with regular reports back to you as to what the vision is and then what tools we have or what tools we need to achieve it. I don't know if that answers your question or it way more than answers the question you asked, Larry, but. Uh, Let me just ask one follow-up question. Sure. Uh, I take your point on having more uh, departments involved because that's where the expertise is in all these areas. But you seem to be implying that, we, that the committee no longer has a function and I would argue that that's, that still may play a role of being the uh, interface, public interface, to uh, play the ideas off before they come back to the board. Uh, what are your, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that's great if, if you sort of look at the charge from last October 1st <coughs> and on lessons learned about what worked with the committee and what didn't, because what we were was a great lightning rod to get input, right. but then actually connected it in a more formal way to the town so and having both to do the, both functions. Yeah. Sure, sure. And, and again, I think that um, the, the especially, and, and again, based on sort of my broader knowledge of how, how towns vision the future and then achieve it, uh, too many local comprehensive plans, of you, as you know, for all the towns, get done and then sit on a shelf, and most of it never happens. So the thing here would be to make sure that the Harwich Center is included um, <coughs> in as granular way as possible to the local comprehensive plan and then you know, pull it off the shelf every quarter or so to make sure that the things that are outlined in the local comprehensive plan relative to Harwich Center uh, are actually being worked on, looked at, planned for, um, resource, uh, you know, it's going to take resources to do it. Yeah. So, so the answer is yes, I think there is a function for the committee, but I, I really do think it has to change so that, you know, it's not just us you know, in an echo chamber, but it's us actually talking to people who can get things done. I'm sure there's other uh, comments from the board, uh, Steve. I just, I, uh, when, when was the last communication with the commission? I, I, don't, I don't think we had a formal, <coughs> see, I mean, did Steve, they, that's one of the problems is that yeah. with what authority did we, were we able to have a conversation with anybody? Yeah. And so that if there was going to be 
uh, a, a conversation, for example, with the commission on traffic. Mm -hmm. That that would be an, you know, an obvious place for Link to have had the conversation. Yeah. And the board would have to say, go talk to the commission about um, the Safe Streets Initiative, which I heard about at the last meeting. Right. Yeah. What a great opportunity to have that as part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. and what, how does that relate to the, to the center of town? We never, I mean, I as chair never, I mean, I know all the folks at the commission really well, but I never actually sat down and had a specific conversation about Har the Harwich Center Initiative because I would have felt awkward doing that based on the charge of the committee. Okay. 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 Uh, Michael? To note, and I think Dan's nailed it, I think it's another committee with a charge that can't do anything. Right. And I think you've brought back some great <coughs> ideas. <coughs> this board needs to think about funding. Infrastructure is a big one. I think we need to figure out where this fits into everything else we have going on right now. Yeah. Good. Uh, Ed? Thank you, Dan. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. And Jimmy. I think um, actually Mike said it quite well. You know, we, Sort of, you need to have somewhat of a vision, but then you ha need to have the resources to really understand whether that vision is in, in any way potentially possible given the, the, the constraints we have. Um, you know, there's uh, uh, the most serious constraints I look at is, is the sort of land tenure issues, the sort of parcelization of the center that doesn't. Uh, allow you the space to really do a lot of the things that need to be done in terms of infrastructure and what's you know then if that's if that's one of the issues then what's the role in the, the, the town sort of solving that and, and whether that's a possibility whether there's the institutional or the policy uh, allowances for the town to participate in that so it, it reminds me of the the joke about how many psychiatrists it takes to change a light bulb, and the answer is the light bulb has to want to change. Yeah. The, 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 <laughs> what we heard was a lot of individual opinions based on sort of, I wouldn't say self-interest, but based on the perspective of the people who are inputting. But what I don't think we ever achieved was a consensus of the committee <clears throat> about what it would look like. I always found charrettes were, in some cases, a waste of money, but it actually would be really interesting to see a mock-up of this, we didn't have the resources to do it, but to have a planner come in relative to that old used word, smart growth, which was way overused and therefore doesn't mean anything anymore. But it would be, it would be really interesting to see what that, what that vision might look like. As far as your charge is concerned, and I am sympathetic because you're trying to get a lot done in town with not enough resources to do it, it really is, Ed, as you said, it's a question of sizing the prize. So that if we determine that to attract you know, real investment money into, that, into this area, it's going to require infrastructure. You're going to have to put a price tag to it and then say, is it worth it? I mean, I can tell you some of the developers that I talk to, whether it's the apartment building or whether it's, you know, adding more um, vitality into the center, it's going to require the town to do something relative to creating an environment where, 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 that, where, where it will attract that kind of investment. Again, whether it's retail, commercial space, or whether it's residential. And I think that I don't, I mean, our committee certainly didn't have the resources to size that, but what, what would be really interesting is to put a price tag to a lot of the improvements we're talking about to create an environment where then pub private dollars would want to come, and then you guys would be able to decide, you know, is it worth X millions of dollars in order to create a vibrant town center? I mean, as somebody who's lived here for 35 years and went back to the stewed tomato and beyond, I love the center of this town. I mean, I just, I think there's a real opportunity here but there are some real, now I understand them even better after the last year, some real impediments to getting that. You know, and, and, a, and a dialogue that has, you know, <coughs> there have been traffic flows which put one-way traffic and then uh, put all the traffic right past uh, McManus's house on Parallel Street, um, if we make it one way. I'm sure Ed would, would support that. I mean, there's just, there have been so many efforts at visioning the Harwich Center. As you know, there have been three or four initiatives going back to 2000, so the last 20 years, uh, periodically groups come together and say let's get this done and I, I you know I do think that there's both a, a, a lack of adequate charge and direction from the board but even more so a lack of resources once we decide on what we want to get done uh, wearing my ex state hat I do think that there are resources if there if the town really comes together in a strong way and speaks with one voice there are state and possibly federal resources that 
could be creatively identified that could actually help with this. But, you know, I, don't, I, I can't identify the low-hanging fruit standing in front of you tonight. Yeah, you got a follow-up? Yeah, yeah, well, you know, this, you mentioned the, the groups that periodically have come, having been part of the, one of the, the previous groups. One, at one, one point we had, uh, I'm not sure if they'd call themselves developers, but people that had development ca capacity in to talk to that group. And um, both of their, their comments were, were the same. That, were really to be able to sustain any investment in the center, there has to be seen a, a, a commitment on, on the part of the town to increasing the, the sort of residential d the density in the surrounding area to be able to help support some of that because you're not going to make it, uh, be able to make it on, on sort of summer traffic alone you need to build a, a resident uh, potential to help support some of that. Um, Don? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, s just a recap, I mean, because I was on the planning board when study two happened. Yeah. Uh, it, sadly, they all seem to crash and burn at the exact same place, uh, which is we don't have the resources, we don't really know what we're going to be able to get a commitment for. Um, just to bring everybody back, uh, I mean, it was the home of the library, and as a and part of the uh, one of the annexes of the library was the first non-commercial bank uh, uh, that was established on Cape Cod. Uh, yeah, the Cape Cod Five. Uh, it, it, the post office was in the center of town. The Exchange Building was a multi-use building, and one by one, we've deleted all kinds of things that made it. The, the hub in the center of town. I hear Michael, uh, I, I mean, as we go forward the next couple of months, I'm going to be agreeing more than not with, with that sentiment, but you name me a time over the last 40 or 50 years where we, we were rolling in dough and we could spend it anywhere we wanted to. That as an excuse to not come up with some sort of vision is a straw argument. I mean, it just it, we're never going to have enough money. What we need is a vision, and I have a feeling that people will coalesce around that. But I, I gather that the, the commercial people aren't uh, in for this because we don't seem to know what we want to be when we grow up. Uh, well, you know, it's, it's interesting, Don, because, for example, the, the area lends itself re relative to water treatment, not necessarily tying into the, to the big project of sewering Harwich. But there's a real opportunity to do a, you know, a, a, a cluster, you know, a small-scale cooperative water treatment that would include, let's say, five to ten entities in the region. And there's even a place you could potentially put that system. I don't understand the, the, what's going to facilitate that process because you're going to need to get four or five or six people willing to invest in that. And maybe it scales if you do that. I'm not sure that the septic issue lends itself to being solved one property at a time. So the question then is, what actually brings everybody together to say, look, if we invest in this property and tie into this, um, then, then it can work. But I'm not sure uh, I see a process that facilitates that. Well, I beg to differ. Uh, th in the first comprehensive plan, which was the real comprehensive plan for the town, uh, it was much more robust, <laughs> resulted after a recognition of where we were geographically and what we wanted to encourage resulted in Fontaine, mm -hmm. uh, you know, growing out of Meta Center 5. Uh, we identified roadways. We identified a desire to have uh, higher paying jobs uh, that would uh, be attendant to that kind of thing. And things started filling in. Uh, so I'm not as depressed over all of this as everybody seems to be. I think we need to be able, uh, yeah, as Stephen and I have talked about this, I mean, uh, the center of town is still important. I, mean, I think we need the vision, the comprehensive plan is that f is starting point. If you can enunciate uh, in a section of it what it is you're looking to do uh, down the road and how that might look and what you're <coughs> willing to encourage, things start happening after that because it becomes a road map. But if everybody just wrings their hands and says, well, this is uh, study number four, so it's just 
<coughs> crashed and burned in the same place. We're not going anymore. Uh, nothing's ever going to happen. You, I know you're not going to get Vaudeville back. You're not going to get the <laughs> post office back there. Uh, Christie's is not even a company anymore, never mind in the center of town. The exchange building is lying in a dump somewhere. Uh, I know what we have done. Uh, I'd kind of like to hear what we'd like to do. I, instead of saying, geez, I don't know who's going to do it for us, lay it out. What do you want? What do we dream of? What does it look like? Uh, put it in a comprehensive plan and see what we can do to encourage it. So that sounds like a motion. <laughs> it would I mean, be again, a really, really long motion. Well, but, but, but again, I, I totally agree with that. The question is, how do you get to that point? Right. And what I guess what I'm, I'm looking back at you and saying, you know, I would love to participate in a process, but the process actually needs to have, have, um, have conduits or synapse <coughs> with existing town entities. The local, co I agree with you, the local comprehensive plan is, is where a really good vision for this should exist. So let us work with Charlene in doing the local comprehensive plan. Use the committee for that. But what I'm asking is that if you're going to continue the committee, give it a direct charge and give existing town entities the charge to use the committee for what you would intend it to be used for. Well, Which as there is going to be a consultant and a comprehensive yeah. plan, I would move that the section of that be informed by the work of this committee. Okay. Okay. Uh, Michael? I've gotten really good at uh, volunteering other board members to do work. Uh, <laughs> we have talked about this previously, and Stephen's shown a lot of interest in being involved in the Norwich <laughs> Center Initiative Committee. So <coughs> I would recommend that we task Steve to work with Joe and put a vision together of what this could be, uh, what town staff would be involved, what, what the new charge of a uh, committee would be, and bring it back to the board for a talking point. Uh, before we throw Steve completely under the bus, uh, Steve, uh, I'm going to assume you're, you're on with that. <laughs> I think it's something we, uh, <laughs> we, we agreed to a while ago. But um, so, n no, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm having grown up in Howard Center and uh, my great-grandfather and grandfather having had stores in Howard Center for many years, um, you know, I'm, I have a, a keen interest. Um, I, again, though, I, you know, I'm happy to do that and I want, I, I, I like sort of what I'm hearing and how we might, I might be able to facilitate the connection to the town and then allowing maybe something more constructive to actually happen. Um, but again, I, I, I say this in conjunction with, uh, I, I think Don's uh, and I have talked about this a number of times, is the overall plan for the town. So more, even more importantly than, you know, a single focus on West Howard, on Howard Port, on Howard Center, uh, is our overall plan for the town. So, you know, I, I'm, I, this, is, this is great and I'm happy to work with it, but we all have to focus, I think, on making sure that we have a comprehensive plan for the town. So. Uh, Don, and then we'll... Thank you, Mr. Chair. Totally agree, but my problem right now, and that's kind of what I was speaking to, is we have somebody who's speaking on behalf of West Harwich. Mm -hmm. We have other entities that are speaking on behalf of different places in town. If this is allowed to just disband and go home, oh, it's not. we have no body who's taking up the, uh, the cause of uh, Harwich Center. No. And we're going to be contracting shortly with a company to help us develop a comprehensive plan. So I would suggest that this committee <coughs> stay intact and it become yeah, I mean, the feeder for advocating for that chapter of the plan. Uh, I, I, I was under the impression that we were there. Um, yeah, so, I, uh, uh, I, I think we have a consensus to, uh, to do what we, to do that. Give the committee, uh, we can recharge it, but we'll see if we'll work to a bit yeah. more direct interaction. Uh, I, I think just one final point I'd like to make is, is that the comprehensive plan for the town is critical to us because each of, the, of our villages has a different look about them. I would argue possibly have a different mission that they can uh, achieve, but we're all linked. And so it should all flow together. So this goes in as one input. We should do it for the other areas as well and, and feed it into the comprehensive, local comprehensive plan. But uh, I want to thank you uh, to here and rest on the committee because it was not an easy uh, discussion, but it, uh, I guess we learned, we, we learned a lot anyway, didn't we? Yes, and it is, it, is, it is always an honor, I, I sincerely mean this, to serve the town of Harwich. It is the greatest town on Cape Cod, and I know them all. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. <laughs> Don. 
yeah, as a point of information, are we, when would the expiration date of this committee be? Well, three weeks ago. Yeah, that's what it I'm saying. It ended, but that, we can, uh, but we can uh, never ask a question you don't know the answer to. Uh, we were going to extend it, but let me. I don't want him leaving the room think, thinking it's done. Uh, I don't we, think he thinks so. I don't think no. that. Yeah, except that the, the appointments have expired, the committee's expired. I mean, I, I, we, well, I, sooner rather than later, we need to come back and immediately uh, reconstitute I would, this. I would rather that uh, Steve and Joe and, and folks come back with some initial thoughts and we'll, we'll set a new deadline for the committee. I don't think we need to take that action. Yeah, right I mean, now. present company included, and and except for Jenny, who was a we, was a great this. member of the committee, we never actually had the committee we needed. Yeah, I, I mean, I'll be that blunt, and you know, again, I'm including myself in that. So maybe with Steve and Joe, we can actually you <coughs> know find and ask people uh, to serve in, in a way and, and get the right people there. Again, a combination of people who have a local special interest because they're here. And, and then people maybe who you know have a, a diverse background who are in the town of Harwich and have a vision. Yep. In uh, terms of timing, uh, my immediate interest would be to have a time that Steve, you could come back with the yeah, I'll get together with, with the charge, and I'd like that to happen fairly quickly. Yeah, you know, that's what I was trying to facilitate, Mr. Chair. Every other time we've done something, even in the DCPC, yeah. we've designated somebody. So uh, I'd like to move that uh, Stephen be, be tasked with. Uh, meeting with the town administrator and coming back to the board with a new charge for this committee. Second. Uh, wait a minute, before you move that, uh, come back to the board in uh, a month's time, six weeks, a month. Can you do a month? Um, yeah, I would think we could. I mean, Joe, you know, we can. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think it's definitely. Uh, I, things are kind of uh, are pretty crazy, I know, but uh, uh, especially as we're. Because we don't move relatively quickly. Uh, now they won't get done. I think, I think that's the, kind of why I'm doing I, this. I, I, I think at the very least uh, we should reestablish sort of the structure of, of the group going forward. My role, how we interact with yep. the various departments and the, and the, the committee. So, but, but as Dan has said, if you don't have some authority behind you, it kind of moves well, that's sideways. The, that's that's, the that's why I would like to have a vote I, to make I sure you're you, designated that. Don, you have a motion. Can I ask you to add a uh, uh, timeline? With an that? expiration of uh, four weeks from today. Second. Now we got it. Any other discussion? <laughs> uh, one other question. Look, what is the timing of the LCP? I'm not 100% clear. Charlene on was the uh, last I asked her. Uh, she was busy and is, was hoping to get started on it this spring. Yeah, this is going to happen this town meeting. Yeah, no, it's good. And good so we're going to miss this town meeting on that. So. Thank, thank yeah. you again. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. Moving on to no, new. No, we still need to vote. We okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm moving quickly tonight. Uh, moving on to Michael. I move that we. <laughs> I move that we approve the request to retain ownership and control the Howard uh, slash mass.gov <coughs> domain name and pay the four hundred dollars. Second. Second. Any discussion? Yep. Yeah. Joe? So it's uh, not a request for the money. We have that budgeted uh, specifically. It's that the chairman and or the board be authorized to sign the forms in the packet to retain the name. And authorize the chair to sign. And retain the name. Thank you. And retain okay. the name. Don? I just have a question. It seems appropriate now. It's just on the phone this afternoon, the insurance agent, she happens to live in Harwich. And this has been something that's been percolating for, that I've seen for at least a year. There's another site out there. You Google the town of Harwich and, you know, get us first. You get something like townofharwich.com uh, rather than .gov. Well, you get uh, Harwich, uh, Erich, England. No, no, this is a real honest-to-God .com site for the United States, and it's confusing. <coughs> if, if we're doing this domain, I'd kind of like to make sure why our uh, search results aren't the first results. This is the official site of the town. I just Googled it. We're the first. We're the first. Yeah, and with Google, but not every other search engine does that. There's always, uh, I saw what she did, and it was Harwich, townofharwich.com. Well, and if you plug it in, you'll find it. I'll follow up with the question. Follow up. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, how much. Uh, I know that there are several that. domains Thank that the town has on <coughs> registration. Any other discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Pass. Uh, Ed? Do we, does the town, 
Um, any other domain names? Uh, yes, we there's uh, at least two others that uh, have the ending of either .us or .gov. Um, I, I know that .com is typically for a commercial enterprise. Uh, it may have been the town had access to it years ago, but <coughs> I don't specifically. But the, the harwich-ma.gov is the one we use. So town.harwich.ma.us yeah. is the primary one, and the other ones that we have feed into that. Okay. Okay. Anything else, Ed? No, no. Uh, I think Joel said he'll look into that a bit. Next on the agenda is discussion of uh, uh, free and free cash analysis. Carol, thank you very much for putting this together. Sure, you're welcome. Carol Coppola, finance director for the town. This is the second year we've used this format to um, just analyze free cash for you. Uh, so, um, so we do have two years of history here in the same format. Um, if you're interested in that, uh, every year um, when we close the uh, fiscal year. Um, we finish that close by having um, ca free cash certified by the Department of Revenue. That happens somewhere in the end of August to September um, timeframe. And it typically happens after the auditors have been on site and um, have completed their, um, the work that they do here in, um, in the town of Harwich. Um, so, I thought <coughs> it would be helpful for you to um, just to look at the different categories of free cash or how it was calculated. Um, and we start with revenues. It, and it's just simply the difference between what did we budget and what did we realize for actual revenues. Um, and by category, I provided that to you here. Um, you have some larger, broader categories that are like other local receipts and what is in those categories are um, items or categories such as licenses and permits, fines and forfeitures, um, investment revenue, and things of that nature. Um, the rest of them are pretty straightforward. We receive um, state grants or state funding um, on an annual basis. Um, that has categories um, um, that are <laughs> broader categories um, for state funding um, that are typical that most communities receive. And then you have some transfers that um, we come in from funds such as CPA funds to um, pay for their debt, uh, for the land bank debt. Other items um, such as Wichmere Pier, the debt for Wichmere Pier is being paid for by a receipts reserve fund, along with some of Sacquatucket Harbor debt, um, things of that nature. Um, though that is in the line item that's um, transfer from other funds. You have your total receipts here. Um, the board has a policy, free cash policy, um, that that is pretty. Um, it's not necessarily too aggressive on receipts. They're saying what they what the policy says is you are to underestimate your receipts. Um, and I think that that um, that mindset um, prior to this year. Um, was there was there was quite a bit of room from where we budgeted our revenue to what we actually received, so you see a, a significant difference between what free cash was set at this year, but that was a board directive. It was given to the previous town administrator and to myself um, when we estimated receipts for the uh, fiscal year of 19. So in total, the um, the excess and um, revenue that was realized. <coughs> about $1.4 million. That includes some one-time revenue, um, which are like tax, ti tax titles that are collected. Uh, we call those one-time revenues because the Department of Revenue doesn't allow us to estimate those. Um, and then we get down to expenditures, and it's simply what did you budget versus what did you spend, um, and what categories or departments were those in. So I provided that information for you here. General government line item includes everything at town hall. Um, so typically that's what we call general government category. And then I broke all the other ones out by your typical categories of public safety and public works and debt service, um, payments that you make to the state or to the county for their assessments. And then you have fringe benefits such as health insurance for the employees, life insurance for employees, 
uh, Medicare, those kind of categories. Um, and then there's general insurance, which includes property and liability insurance. At the end, um, there was not, uh, nine, oh, a little over $900,000 in surplus, um, and that added to your free cash number as well. Um, this year was a little bit different. Um, we, um, the, I had um, your assessor go through and reconcile um, <coughs> years overlay. Um, I don't think it had been done since your prior assessor <coughs> was here um, before he passed away. So we went through that um, project early in last spring. Um, that resulted in a write down of your uh, free cash as well. Um, so that was a large component of why this is so different than it has been in the past. In the past, your free cash has ranged anywhere, um, going back for about 10 years, it's ranged anywhere from a negative $132,000 to, um, and that was in FY12. In FY16, um, it was just over $4 million. And in the previous fiscal year, it was just under $3.5 million. So there are significant changes. We were more aggressive on how we estimated revenue, and then we had that one-time write-down for the overlay reconciliation. There are, are some other very small items that affect free cash, such as um, frequently the police department has a state grant. Um, the grant monies aren't <laughs> distributed to the communities until somewhere around October or November, certainly after the end of the fiscal year. Free cash is always certified before that, so they deduct that from free cash, things of that nature. Those are the small um, items that also affect free cash. Okay. Happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, thank you, Caroline. This is a needed discussion now because I, I think as we move into the budget season, uh, we're all aware of that, and you make the point that we, uh, we're more aggressive in uh, being careful with our budget, not to build any slop, slop or increase in our budget over expenses. What that means, though, is, is that decrease the amount of money we have the following year for capital expenses. And to the extent we maintain doing that, which I think we will because we're concerned about the budget, it's a broader discussion. It's a discussion of what we're looking forward in the outlying years on capital expenditures. And so we need to be aware of that going into this discussion of what you're, what you're talking about. Correct. I mean, in, in <coughs> prior years, you also used free cash to fund OPEB and to fund your stabilization fund as well. Um, in addition to that, <coughs> you typically use it for snow and ice deficits. Yeah. And to the extent that I know Jack's saying here, we're concerned about stabilization funds, for instance, as a critical factor. We need to be sure to budget that and not depend on free cash if we, at the same time, are more careful with how much we budget to carry over, if that makes sense. So it'll drive a lot of our, it, it, it helps, this information helps drive our budget discussion. Uh, Michael, I know you raised this question, so. Yes. You first. So Carol, the most frequent question I get is why was free cash two years in a row, 3.5 to $4 million, and this year it's 1.4 million. Is the answer that we just were tighter on the budget last year? We were more careful with the numbers, is that the answer? Uh, not, no, we're always careful with the numbers. Well. So, we were just more aggressive in how we estimated revenue. Okay. So that's the primary driver in going down to, or from 3.9 million to 1.4. There, there were two primary drivers. One was the write down, the one time write down for overlay that we, I went through that process and reconciled with the assessor, which had not been completed, again, since the prior assessor was here. Um, and then certainly, um, a million of it was revenue. Revenue. And th what was the write down in the overlay? It is right, um, it's right here. At, there's a section in the bottom of the document that I provided to the board that says free cash is comprised of primarily four components. Yep. It's that fourth one down there. It's 880885. Yeah. <coughs> Great. That's really it. Now, Steve? Uh, and Michael was asking the same questions. I, I, it just it, it just gives us a, a clearer picture, I think, which is, uh, you know, which is very helpful. Uh, Ed? Oh, no. Thank uh, you, Carol. Uh, Don? 
Well, this, this is more for the, a future discussion because uh, in looking at this, I just hope everybody recognizes we should we should commend the uh, yeah. is that the education is in schools, correct? The Pardon 20, me, I'm sorry. The Twenty-seven million. Yes. Okay, I commend them for handing back one dollar out of twenty-seven million. I mean, we're going to have to have a bigger discussion about uh, this when we get there because we're all feeling the hurt right now and. It, it, I know nobody does this for the record, but spending down something so that it only gets to within a dollar of what you were appropriated just doesn't sound right. We all need to be in the same leaky boat together. Okay. Any other comments? Comments from the audience? If not, thank you, Carol. Thanks, Carol. Next on the agenda are contracts. Uh, first one is fire station number two, change order. Uh, Joe or Norm, uh, Norm, you're going to take the lead on this? So, Mr. Chairman, I would just mention you can see the report from the interim um, assistant administrator and engineer, uh, both of who reviewed this, and it's a uh, recommendation that the Board of Selectmen approve the procurement as outlined and authorize the chairman to sign. Uh, the amount is for 15306 And I'm just looking for the net change now. Uh, so you have that chief off the top of your head. The, uh, <clears throat> for the change order itself, the request total request is fifteen thousand. Yeah, I have fifteen three oh six. Yep, nineteen cents. Ni I was rounding though. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, I move that we approve change order number zero zero nine in the amount of fifteen thousand three hundred and six dollars and nineteen cents for fire station two. Second. Second. Norma, just to recap, is that? still within the uh, overall budget we are um, it's certainly not our goal nor will it be tolerated to spend it down to a dollar um, as we did some math today we, we will be back with the probably one more change order request uh, I'm gonna guess about the same amount of money okay. but as I uh, look today with our just our contingency money we have a um, balance still left in contingency that um, is, I think is pretty commendable is ninety ninety thousand eight hundred nine dollars and eighty two cents okay. in contingency that we haven't spent there are other uh, other budget items that were part of the pro project that we'll never touch so uh, we certainly would like to think that we'll be bring back uh, you know a hundred thousand or so on the project I hope that's Thank that's you, certainly a reasonable goal yeah, one final question. Yes, uh, you plan to move into the station? I've instructed the department to be ready to move into the station to start that process Monday. Okay. Yes. Thank you. That's great. Do I have a motion? We have a motion. And a second. And a second. Mm -hmm. Any discussion from the audience? All in favor? <coughs> Aye. 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 Next is the snowplow contract uh, for the town of Harwich. Uh, uh, so thank you, Mr. Chairman. What you'll see in the packet is there are uh, as referenced at a previous meeting, there are three separate contracts. These were for snow plow services. Uh, they have been vetted by the procurement team and there were changes made, uh, just um, language changes on the signature page to reflect the town's policy on uh, limits of signature authority. Uh, but wanted to make the board aware of, um, I believe we had 20-something um, contracts that um, had been presented by the Department of Public Works um, none of them have a true value to them yet because there's an expectation of services to be rendered. However, it is expected that snowplow services in general for the town of Harwich provided by Robert B. Auer uh, may exceed that threshold. So I'll be asking the board um, to approve the contract and to sign. And then there's Robert B. Auer uh, as the town is required to do for the Monomoy Regional High School. Uh, as part of our um, district agreement. And then the last one is services provided by GFM uh, for the town expected to <coughs> threshold. All of these have the um, insurance limits that the town had discussed last year and on the direction uh, of Maya and in, in consideration of what the finance group is requesting, uh, meaning all of the language is consistent with what is expected. So I'd be asking for the board to uh, authorize and approve these three contracts individually and for the board to sign. Is there a motion? 
Okay. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Uh, discussion. Uh, Joe, I just have one uh, question. Uh, the snow plowing for the Monomoy, do, do we back charge them for that? I, mean, I know we pay high most of that anyway, but how's that? No, we, um, according to the agreement, we're responsible for contracting and paying. Okay. Any other discussion? Discussion from the audience? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Joe. Uh, maybe we'll, uh, so far we've avoided snow, so maybe we'll stay lucky. Old business, the uh, interim loan and certification. Joe, you want to uh, walk us through this? I'd like to defer to our treasurer to do that, treasurer collector. I have the, uh, sorry, I have the bond, the interim loan note here for you guys to sign. Um, this was approved on August 12th of 2019, and it's for various um, pro contracts that for, let me look, find that paper here. It's a number of contracts, um, construction, for it's contract number one, two. These are all, you know, having to do with the sewer. Um, and also police contract one and police contract two. And that should all have been in the packet also. Any questions for Amy? Any, 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 any motion? Can I uh, ask a question? The uh, total part of this loan is 22 plus million. Mm -hmm. uh, I think our contracts one and two add up to more than that, 24 million. Um, I have the page here that shows everything. And I don't think this page actually did make it into the packet, but I can show it to you. This, this lists all the contracts that that covers and it adds up to the 22, 214, 467. Okay. I'll bring that up when I bring the bonds. Right. Any other questions, comments? Yeah, I just want to see the totals. Michael's just going to double check the totals. We can take a motion while we're checking that. The chair moves that we uh, um, approve the interim loan note certificate of $22,214,467 uh, be authorized by the selectmen. Yes. And we sign the interim loan note certificate. Okay. Is there a second? Second. I'll just point out that that's the, uh, it's a 0% uh, interest loan that we're uh, that we're signing. I think this pertains yeah, to that. Is this going to be that? Michael, do you get the information you uh, want to look at? You don't want this one. No. I'm I'm fine with it. You're fine. Any other discussion? Anyone from the floor, Don? Uh, just to explain my vo uh, coming vote, uh, I have been solidly in this direction since the very beginning. I don't think we should have started this if we couldn't finish it and we borrowed money to max out what we were authorized to and we still haven't finished it so I will not be voting in favor of this. Any, any other comments? I will comment in that regard. We did get a uh, uh, loan forgiveness on this of uh, approximately 560000 which will help ease the pain a little. Okay, yes. all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye, so four to one. Moving next to the uh, town administrator's reports. <coughs> Joe? So, um, Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to start with the, um, uh, as you can see, their presentation of a contract signed by the interim town administrator. Um, I know that this was mentioned at last week's meeting. What I'm working on is uh, both a, a list of all the contracts signed since November 18th but also packet material. So I will uh, bring the board up to speed on January 27th from November 18th to that point and then do it on a weekly basis if that ex that's acceptable to the board. Okay, thank you. 
Thank you. The, uh, the next item I have on the administrator's report, Mr. Chairman, is a request of the board, um, as, as I had mentioned to you before, I would ask if the board is uh, willing and able to start the meeting on the 27th at 5.30 p.m., and that would be to accommodate uh, the Monomoy Regional School District and presentation of their draft budget. Uh, the original uh, timeline had them scheduled for February 3rd, um, but as you know, February 3rd is when we'll be doing <coughs> all uh, budget message and discussion on that, preliminary discussion on that. Um, I had asked uh, Superintendent uh, Carpenter if he was available to present next week. He did indicated that he was, but he was already previously booked for the town of Chatham at 7 p.m. If we can accomplish this at 5.30, it gives the town of Harwich the chance to hear the full presentation that will then be presented to the town of Chatham, and that way we're all on the same page on the same day. It also allows us the opportunity to focus singularly on the school's budget on the 27th as we then transition to the overall budget on the 3rd. So if the board is willing and able to do that, I respectfully request that start time. Thank you, Joe. Uh, Joe brought this to my attention last uh, couple days ago. It makes sense, but I want it to be uh, uh, <coughs> presented to uh, everyone because it does move us up an hour, which may make it less convenient for some people to watch it. Mm -hmm. But uh, if no one objects, I think we should go ahead and... Uh, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, it's me. Okay, I would let's, agree. let's move ahead. We'll start next week then at 5.30. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the next thing I have is an update on the uh, the Garden Club matter that we talked about last week. Um, at this point, there are three potential uh, options for the Garden Club. Um, their preference, again, remains for town property at Bank Street. I was able to reach out to Maya, and I have uh, a tentative answer on the insurance matter. What I'd like to do is reach out to the Garden Club tomorrow, um, see if that option is, is agreeable to them. Um, if it's not, there's other properties that we're looking at in town. And I know that they've also been working <coughs> with a private group, um, potential private property that may be beneficial for them. Uh, I'm very hopeful that the insurance question can be uh, essentially mitigated and they can go with their first choice, but just need to follow up with the uh, folks tomorrow. Thanks, Joe. I, I must admit a little frustration in this because the Garden Club plays such a vital role to how we look in town. And it's... Uh, a little disappointed that it's taken this much jumping through hoops to get to the end spot sure. when we get a request of that kind. Yeah. Understood. Michael? I just further request that we relay that through the town, of, town administrator to the Garden Club that we all recognize how important the Garden Club yeah. is and, and that this was a, a transitional era, I guess I'll call it. I, I did convey that to, to the representative last week, and I'm continuing to emphasize that. Okay, good. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. That uh, concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Michael? If I could just ask of the uh, Treasurer Collector if we could get this emailed to the board, the list of what the contracts, how they add up, sure. and then I would ask that we put it back in the packet next week, the entire document with the list so the public can okay. see what we're doing. Okay. Please. Okay. Uh, Selections reports then. Uh, I guess uh, I'll start with you, Steve, because Don's signing papers in this one. Hello. Michael? I have nothing. Don? Thank you, Mr. Chair. The uh, Affordable Housing Trust met this past week, and I'm trying to make sure that you folks are following what we're doing <coughs> along the way. Um, these, the two items I'm going to talk about are just organically connected to each other. The, fir the first thing is the uh, Community Preservation Committee uh, in its deliberations wound up uh, approving about half, well, actually exactly half of what, what we requested. Uh, in uh, I agree with them, actually. Uh, part of their rationale was uh, we weren't showing how we were spending the money or intended so. Now, on the one hand, a trust needs to have money to be able to jump on things right away, but on the other hand, we spent a year and a half uh, without a real plan. So the last meeting we had uh, the consultants come in uh, who are going to create uh, along with interviewing stakeholders, and by the way, the Board of Selectmen were identified as a stakeholder, uh, uh, to determine uh, what our uh, plan of action should be for the committee uh, so they can present it to us, uh, consider it, and vote on it, which I think is uh, an excellent thing. We also made, uh, after conversation, uh, we made uh, a promise that except for one project, which we have identified, and that would be the uh, assistant road behind uh, the uh, HJT, 
uh, early. Uh, we are moving along with at least exploring what the engineering looks like uh, for that to c come up with a, a successful project, but we are not pursuing anything right now. And for the record here, as well as at that past meeting, uh, there aren't any private developers that have any deals. We haven't even set priorities yet that would uh, determine where they would fit within the realm of all of the possibilities. So um, I think this is actually good news. We're taking a step back. We're looking at how we operate. and. Uh, when we come out of this, there will be a real cl a clear plan of attack. And as I said, the Board of Selectmen are going to be involved, Planning Board is going to be involved, the ZBA is going to be involved, and I actually uh, intend to bring all of the possible providers, uh, like HACC, uh, uh, CDP, Habitat, HESH, to have them discuss what they could bring to the table in the future. Uh, but I'm anticipating this being a lot more public and a lot more transparent. That's my report. Uh, if I could ask, if somebody has something that they uh, want to present, who do they talk to in the housing trust? How would they get a hold of them? Well, they can talk to me <coughs> about it. But I'm really reticent. Uh, you know, talking is fine right now, and I think we should talk, and everything should be out in public when we have these discussions as opposed to somebody approaching somebody. But we're probably not going to take an action if there's a dollar sign attached to it. We can act as a bully pulpit. If somebody wants us, uh, let's say Pine Oaks 4, uh, you know, wanted some support, uh, I, I think that's the kind of thing that we would do at least initially, is to, you know, vote to support uh, projects. But expenditures, uh, in, in the words of the late uh, Bob Murray, you're going to have a lot of money. You're going to have a lot of money that you uh, appropriate, and if you keep, keep doing studies and just fritter it away, at the end, you're not only not going to have anybody living in anything, you're just going to, well, he used a word other than this, but you're going to be frittering the money away. So mm -hmm. he, he was right then, he's right now. I mean, we've got to think about how we're going to spend it, or we're going to spend it all, and we're not going to have anything. Don, I look forward, for my own sake, of... Uh, <laughs> One of your first uh, goals is tying all the different organizations together, so we get kind of a flow chart to see who's doing what to whom, which is those are their always marching <laughs> orders. <laughs> always uh, confuse me. Uh, the other thing I'd ask your uh, committee is to uh, it'd be a great time to have a conversation of non-monetary uh, items and how it affects and what the input may be into a comprehensive plan it, and it, the vision of the town, because that'd be the uh, great. Uh, follow up to a Harbor Center discussion and uh, the whole housing, so great. great yeah, work. our plan of attack actually should, uh, since we've already hired these people, uh, will actually come to us and the other stakeholders a lot sooner than the comprehensive plan is going to be uh, fleshed out. So yeah, that's probably, yeah. I see them flowing one into the other. Good. Okay. Uh, I just have a couple comments. Uh, one is I've circulated to you a draft of uh, several documents regarding our uh, search <coughs> activity. Uh, their draft, I'd like to put them on the agenda next time so we have a public discussion come out. But uh, you'll note that I've uh, stolen very freely from uh, other towns and uh, then taken the liberty. <laughs> uh, <coughs> taken the liberty to add some of my own. Uh, no, no, uh, you haven't stolen. They still have their documents. You just plagiarized. <laughs> well, uh, I'm not the first because if you no. look at, uh, uh, I think Michael, you said, Steve, you did this too. You look I at did. eight, ten towns. I did. They all, <laughs> they all look about alike. You're not kidding. Uh, <coughs> but I ask you, if you will, look at those and get back your thoughts uh, because we do then uh, like to review those and then uh, get uh, our next step would be to go off with quotes on a. Uh, we decide to go that direction on the uh, uh, recruiting firm. Uh, Ed? Yeah. Um, uh, just a, a question. Uh, I, uh, this uh, Friday and Saturday is the municipal <coughs> annual meeting. On Saturday, they have a business meeting, and we're allowed uh, one voter. Um, Mr. Chair, are you planning on being there to I vote? I do. Okay. Because if you weren't, we would have needed to. <laughs> And my vote, this is really, a, don't look that way, Michael. This is an important vote. <laughs> <laughs> anything else? If not, uh, anything? Move to adjourn. Second. Second.